Good morning. Good to be here together in worship and um, want to share a few updates for um, announcements today. And one is, a lot of you have already seen right out in the lobby, we have our 2022 contribution statements. They are available if you would like yours. They should be in alphabetical order in there for you. If you don't see yours, check with your spouse or significant other, because we had that little confusion earlier today. <laughs> I can't find mine. Well, anyway, um, tomorrow we do have food drop-off outside, right under the carport there. And you've seen the grocery prices going up, and it's making the need for a little extra help even greater for a lot of people. So encourage you, if you have a little something you can share, to, to bring that and share that. Um, next Sunday is fifth Sunday worship. It's 10 o'clock. And if you come at 1030, most of the service will be over because it's going to be a shortened devotional and communion time together. So, because afterwards, we're inviting you to stay so that we can all put our faith into action. We do know of a couple different projects we have going on and hopefully picking up a couple of others to do. So um, just come in some casual, comfortable clothes and be ready to, to put your faith in action together. And there'll be some really easy things and things that are maybe a little more complex, so you can take your choice, but nothing too hard for everybody there. Also, a few other things coming up. Um, February 12th, which is in a few weeks, it's a Sunday, we will be installing deacons. We have failed to do that the last few years, We've, and you are still officially deacons, even if you weren't installed, but we're going to officially install you. We'll do that at both services, so either service that you come to, but that'll be Sunday, February 12th, and if you are a new deacon and feel like you have not been installed, and we might not realize that, please make sure to tell us so we will get you in there. We know, we know the two this year, definitely, but we have a couple others we've missed basically because of the pandemic. So um, Super Bowl Sunday is also February 12th, and that is when you get to vote for your favorite team or the commercials, and you can vote with either money or with food items. All of that which is donated will stay locally for the Bread for Life food pantry and help them with people in our community. But it's also a fun way to support a favorite team or the commercials, in my case. Anyway, um, and then, just something to put on your calendar, March 12th, our long-range planning group is hosting a karaoke fun afternoon. It's going to be fun. Choir, we're going to expect you to be right in there singing for us. So... It's going to be a little bit of a fundraiser, kind of fun. You can, you can pay to sing, you can pay to have someone else sing, or you can pay to not have to sing. <laughs> that might be our bigger fundraiser, but I'm just saying, if you would like to put a block on your name, you can, you can pay for that privilege too. So, <clears throat> thank you, Greg says, thank you. <laughs> anyway, um, that is coming up here in a couple of months, but we just wanted you to get it on your calendar because I know you won't want to miss karaoke fun here. And um, any others? All right. With all yes. 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 All right. Just so we don't take up any important time of the of the worship service, I wanna I wanna share a little something with you. Some of my, one of my bad traits. <laughs> Excuse me. I don't have many, but I do have a few. <laughs> Brother Jim, we don't need to, you know, expand on that since you visited with me the other night. Uh, a couple weeks ago, maybe longer, I received a, uh, what do you want to call it, a, a get well card from my little knee operation. And uh, it wasn't from any of you all in this church, so I'm sorry. It was uh, from a Sunday school class at the Baptist Church over in Bloomfield. 
And being the kind of person that I am, you know, I don't really always respond and send back and all that. You know, I, I thought, well, since this was their second card they had sent me in 17 years, I better respond. Because the first card they sent me was 17 years ago after a little tragic accident that I had with a young man that he lost his life in a wreck. I thought I better give him a little thank you card this time. But then again, I want to thank each and every one of you all in this church this morning for all the cards and the prayers and the thoughts and the little squeeze of hands and the pat on the back. I mean, I just had a little knee surgery, folks, okay? But I do greatly appreciate it. There's a lot of people in this congregation that need a lot more prayers and cards than I do. And it's greatly appreciated. I remember my mom and dad used to get some from you all, and it, was, it meant the world to them, and it means the world to me. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Karen. If you would, please join me in our call to worship and please stand. We are disciples of Christ, of movement from a wholeness in a fragmented world. As part of the one body of Christ, we welcome all to the Lord's table as God has welcomed us. Let us join together in our opening hymn.
Let us pray, please. Arise upon us, holy God, and turn our lives around. Too long we have hidden in the shadows, reluctant to share and live our faith. Too long we have failed to forgive and build bridges. Help us, loving God, to love as you have loved, that others might see your love and light reflect, reflected in all we do and say. Hear us now as we pray as Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth that is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'd like to have our young people please come forward for our time for children's church. Come on down, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good to see everybody else. Jasper coming? Maybe, kind of. Hey, he's coming. He's checking everything out. Checking out the pretty windows. All right. Calvin, thanks for coming down, supporting your little brother and sister here. That's cool. Appreciate you. What a guy. What a nice brother he is. Okay. See, Peppy? All right. All right. I have, we're, we're going to do something a little, little different today. I'm going to ask you a, a question. Calvin? Could you follow me? Just follow me, bud. Okay, here we go. Ready? Just follow me. Follow me. Okay. Very you go. You're doing a good job. You're doing a good job. Jasper, you want to follow us? Yeah, eh, maybe. Okay. Penelope, you want to follow us? All right, here we go. All right. Walking. You guys follow me around? Oh, good job. Doing a great job. Landon, you want to follow me? All right. Come on, Landon. There we go. Jasper, you want to follow along? Okay, there we go. Very good. Very good, everybody. I appreciate this. You don't guess. Turn around. Go back. Okay, Liam, you want to follow us too, dude? All right. Very nice. Oh, God. You guys are doing a great job. Doing a great job following along. Very good. Very good. Everybody have a seat. Very good. That's a nice job following there. You know, that's exactly what Jesus asked some people today. Ooh, hurt my knee there. Uh, asked some people today that were out working in a boat fishing and jesus said follow me and they did exactly what you did they just left everything and they followed jesus and followed after him and jesus went around preaching and teaching and healing people and including people and telling people about the good news about god and all kinds of cool stuff and more and more people started following jesus that way because somebody uh he's all right you not heard anything uh, somebody said, Jesus said, come and follow me. Do you guys ever play follow the leader? You ever play that game sometimes? Play Simon Says sometimes, all those, those cool games. Or used to play, I know you're a little too old, too cool. We understand, we, we get you. But uh, we play those games. Well, Jesus encouraged people to follow him. And the world has been changed for the better ever since. What are some ways you think people should follow and do some good things out there that Jesus would want us to do? Anybody think of anything? What do you think? What do you think? 
pray. Pray. Oh, fall on pray. Very good. Very good. Anybody else? Other things we should follow that Jesus wants us to do? Uh, follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. That's right. Follow Jesus. Do what he would do. Very good. Anybody else have any ways we should follow? There's all kinds of ways we can follow along and follow and do what Jesus wants us to do. And we're going to talk about that today. So let's everybody circle up if we could. Come over here. There you go. You going to join us, Jasper? Cool. Maybe. Maybe not. Come on and see Peppy. Yeah, Bubby will help you out. There you go. Oh, or not. There you go. Either way. All right. He's going to follow his own, own drum there. That's all right. That's okay. That's all right, too. All right, let's go ahead and say our prayer. Then after um, we have Mrs. Karen's doing uh, Worship and Wonder today, so you'll follow her on out uh, after we're through with our prayer. All right, let's go ahead and have our prayer. We thank you for the children. Amen. Thank you all so very much. Now you can follow Miss Karen now. All right. Thank you. I was reading an old um, stewardship journal that came out several years ago. But there was an article in it, To Love is to Give, by Gunhee Yu. And he said, consider the holistic understanding of stewardship, all the parts of it, specifically tithing among Asian Christians. There is a proverbial saying in Asia, particularly in Korea, Sipsi Ilban, which translated means, literally translated, it means a tenth of all things. But for them, the proverb means a spoonful of rice from 10 people makes a bowl of rice. Think about that. You think, I don't have a lot to give, or I can give more. But whatever we all put together makes the whole all of our little bits and pieces and different amounts. So when you consider it, if we each can give a spoonful of what we have and share, whether it's a large spoonful or a small spoonful, when we share together, others have enough. We are called to think of ourselves as stewards that means not just of our money, but of this church, of this world. God has called us to be stewards to care for all of creation in so many ways. Let us be stewards together. Will you join me in prayer? Oh God, we are thankful for the many ways you have given to us we are thankful you have called us to be stewards, to share what we have with all of your creation. We pray, O oh God, that you will bless that which is received today and in the days to come in your name, that all we do will bring praise to you. In the name of your Son, we pray. Amen. As we prepare for our prayer time together, I would invite you, if you would like to join me in um, our prayer hymn in just a moment. I would invite you also, if you have a prayer concern you have not shared yet, if you will text that to the number on the screen, and we can share that as well. Thank you.
as we go into our time of prayer together, I'd like to share with you our different prayer concerns that are on our, our list at this point today. Um, and let me write this one down real quickly. So we can share this. All right. So we do have we do have a little bit of a good news here, and that is that um, Sunny C, who is Sheila's brother in law, sorry. Gotcha. <laughs> um, anyway, he was scheduled for surgery this week on his heart, and they have decided to try medicine first. So we are hopeful and prayerful that that medicine will do what is needed and take care of that. Um, also found out last Sunday after church that Patsy H. was starting chemotherapy this past Monday. So um, she does have another spot, and so she will be has started chemotherapy for that. Also, Pat, who is, who is right here with us, um, has another lesion in, in the brain, and he, hmm? On the brain. On the brain, sorry. That, thank you, though, that's important. And um, going to see someone this week and hoping to get it zapped. That's the medical term, zapped. So, yeah. And we are hopeful as well. Um, also want to keep in prayer Barbary O., and Debbie P., who is a sister of Danny, um, we continue to hold Kimmy in prayer. Has she gone home yet, or she's still in the hospital, still getting her strength back from all that aggressive chemotherapy she's had? So we continue to hold her in prayer. Um, also, Amy T. is still in the hospital. She is out of the CCU, but is still in the hospital. Um, Becky D. is has a neurologist appointment this week for all the back pain she's been having. So we'll keep her in prayer. Um, Barbara B. is having a, uh, ongoing health concerns and want to keep, she is definitely asking for prayer to get through this, all of these issues. Um, Chris W. has an injured ankle. Um, they're going to be getting looked at here soon. Also, uh, Kayla A. is recovering from a procedure she had this past Friday. Um, Elise has ongoing health issues. Uh, J, um, yes, J.W., who is Elliot's dad, is having total knee replacement tomorrow. Um, also, uh, Stacy G., who we have Stacy on here for the passing of her aunt, she and her family, but also Stacy's husband is in the hospital with an infection in his blood. So getting IV antibiotics and hopefully getting that cleared up. Also, um, we have Precious on our prayer list today, who is, who is Brooke's cat. And you might laugh at that, but you know what? We have a blessing of the pets every October. And so if we need to pray for our little loved Precious friends, we'll just do that. So we, it's okay. We, we care very much about them. Otherwise, we wouldn't have a pet blessing. So it's all good. Um, also, Dillard L., who is the, a lot of you who have been to church camp probably know Dillard. He is the husband of Linda, who runs the church camp. But as I've been told, he is the number one volunteer at the church camp. He does a lot, and he is... Um, He's having a lot of health issues right now, so we want to keep him in prayer and um, just praying for, for some good results for him. And also, um, if you noticed our beautiful flowers we have up there, those are from uh, Mike Sawney's memorial service this week. That's uh, Brenda's husband, and we want to keep their family in our prayers. Also, one other thing that we have on here, if you don't realize, we have a large Disciples of Christ churches, group, people, 
in Africa, specifically in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. And so that community of the Disciples of Christ in the DRC has reported they have had ongoing flooding since October, massive flooding since October. They have lost schools, health centers, chapels, and homes. Fields and crops have been destroyed, leveling their food crops, and over 170 people have died so far in this flooding. So we are asking for prayers for them because they are our brothers and sisters in the Disciples of Christ. Let us turn to God in prayer at this time. Oh God, we come to you this day with so many different prayer concerns and prayer requests, and we lift them to you. But we also come this day, oh God, to just give thanks to you. And so we lift our voices in praise to you as we pray as we sing, as we let the music fill our hearts. We lift our praise to you, O God, when we greet one another, when we make others know they are welcome here in this place. O God, we are so thankful to be here together, to share together with all of these joys and concerns. We lift them up to you this day, O oh God. We pray for those who are suffering from cancer and from other illnesses, those who continue to deal with ongoing health issues. We pray for answers. We pray for healing. We pray for strength and for your presence with each one. We pray also, O oh God, with those who are in the hospital, those who are home recovering, may they too know that you are with them. We lift up to you, O oh God, those who have lost loved ones recently or ones they continue to grieve. We give thanks, O oh God, in knowing that we do not grieve alone, for you understand our sorrow and our loss. But we also thank you, O oh God, for the promise of life through your Son. We pray this day, O oh God, for our brothers and sisters around the world, as we have gathered here in this church that is warm and dry we think of our other brothers and sisters who do not have this blessing, this privilege. And so we think of those who are in war zones, who may not have a safe place, and yet they still proclaim you God and worship. We think of those with flooding in California, in the Democrat Republic of the Congo, and so many other places, O oh God. May they know that despite all of it, you are there with them. And we just pray, O oh God, that you will help us find ways to be your hands and feet in this world, that we might continue to lift the good news to bring hope to others, that we might continue to use what we have to share so that others will know your light in their lives. It's in the name of your Son that we pray. Amen.
told you it was just going to be a fun little song this week, last week, didn't I? Thank you to Karen and Jackie and everybody for singing today. Appreciate that, as always. Our scripture lesson today is taken from the gospel according to Matthew, the fourth chapter, beginning with verse 12. Now, when Jesus heard that John the Baptist had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the sea in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea, across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets, and they followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James and son of Zebedee and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called to them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee proclaiming in the synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. Here is a reading from God's holy word. Well, it's hard to believe for us or to even imagine waking up one day and having a foreign army pouring across our borders to invade us. We have not had a occupying army on our land in America since the War of 1812, a couple hundred years ago. Yes, we have had the attack on Pearl Harbor and during World War II, December 7, 1941. We have had the terrorist attacks of 9-11. So we have not been unscathed, but unlike our brothers and sisters in Ukraine, our brothers and sisters in certain parts of Africa and our brothers and sisters in certain parts of the Middle East, it is hard for us to imagine waking up and having an occupying army in our own territory. Well, the land of Zebulun, the land of Naphtali, was occupied by the Babylonians. Their headquarters were in northern what is now Iraq in the city of Nineveh or what is now modern-day Mosul. And they had come down and taken over that northern territory of the land of Zebulun and Naphtali that the prophet Isaiah uh, foretold that a light had shined in the darkness there, even though they were under occupation. Fast forward to the time of Jesus. He heads up to that part of the country after his cousin John the Baptist is put into prison. And to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah. But there's still another occupying army there. This time the Romans. Who had taken over not only that, the northern Israel land of Naphtali and Zebulun. But all the way down all of Israel, all of Judah, all of Palestine. All of Europe, all of northern Africa, all into Turkey and even beyond that. Did the Romans occupy. But regardless of this, regardless of that occupation, regardless of the darkness and the shadow of death that was hanging over the people at that time, the light of Christ was shining because people followed him. Now, this is a fantastic story that we hear today, isn't it? I mean, imagine yourself. Now, we've heard this story a million times. Yeah, we know Jesus calls uh, Peter and, and Andrew and James and John, they pick up everything, they follow him, blah, blah, blah. We've heard the story. Nothing new here, Jim. We all know how this turns out. But think about how it really was. Think about it in terms of today. 
You're at your office, you're at your job site, you're at your school, you're at your distillery, you're at on the farm, you're wherever you work. And somebody comes by and says, hey, follow me. You drop everything. You quit your job. You leave your family, and you follow that person. That's exactly what happened to those first disciples who followed Jesus. Peter and Andrew were in the boat. In the boat. Come follow me and make you fish for people. Okay, Jesus, here we go. Leave, every, leave the boat, everything. <laughs> Come follow Jesus. And poor Zebedee, I feel sorry for him. Both his sons, uh, James and John, are in the boat. Now, I don't know, I've worked, I used to work a lot for my dad. My dad had a used car lot. It was kind of a side hustle. Uh, we were growing up, and I, you know, I've worked a lot with my dad on a lot of different projects and, and working for different people. I guarantee you, I would not have uh, jumped up and left a project without my dad's permission growing up i definitely because <laughs> i would have got jerked back and hey, you, you're not, we're not done here yet you're not going anywhere get get this thing done over here what are you doing but zebedee just sits there while both his sons leave the family business leave him in the boat fixing the nets i kind of feel sorry for him because i know he had to have a conversation with his wife at some point Zebedee, where, where, where's James? Where's John? It's time for supper. Oh, they ran off with some itinerant preacher. <laughs> Which one? Oh, you know that Jesus fella. He's, he's going around preaching and teaching. He, he's from up Nazareth way. You know. Well, when are they going to be back? Oh, I have no idea, honey. They'll, they'll just take their plates off the table. You know, I have no idea when they're going to come home. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't want to have that conversation with Jackie about both of our children, you know. Where's Clayton and Kate? Oh, they ran off with some itinerant preacher out somewhere. When are they going to be back? I have no idea. What are they doing? I don't know. Where are they? I don't know. I mean, that's not a conversation you want to have with your spouse. But that's what happened to Zebedee. Immediately, Jesus asked them, and it says the word immediately both times. They don't even think about it. They're not like, well, should we go follow Jesus? Should we not? What do you think? Let's talk it over with Dad here. No, no. Immediately, it says. They jump up, leave everything, and they follow Jesus. That's, that's, be, that's beyond belief. It, it, it's fantastic. It's powerful. Because let's face facts, folks. If you were going to pick a group of people, or I was going to pick a group of people to change the world forever like Jesus did, who would you pick? Tell me, who, who, would, who, would, who are some, some people you would pick if you're going to have your disciples to change the world? Shout out a few things to me. You know, who would you pick to be on your team to get things started? What kind of people would you pick? Don't look at me. Talk to me. What? You? Oh, he really means it. Yes, I really mean it. That's right. It's a group participation part of the sermon. Who would you, what kind of people would you pick? Shout some things out to me. Who are you going? Me. Wow, I know, I know. <laughs> that's, pr that's pretty fantastic right there. You picked me. Oh, okay, well, I'm flattered. Thank you. I, I, don't, know. I don't know if I would pick me. That's, uh, so that's, that's pretty good. Who else would you pick out there? What? Honest people. I heard somebody in the back. People you can trust. Okay, well, those are some good things. Strong people. Okay, very good. Very good. Anybody else? Would you kind of, would you want to pick, I don't know, very intelligent people? Yes, yes, I heard a yes back here. Who knew stuff, who could figure things out, who could network for you, get things set up for you. Okay, might want, how about a rich person? Somebody's got to bankroll this, this, this movement here. I mean, you just, you know, takes money to change the world out there, folks. You know, takes money. So, you know, somebody's got a little money out there. How about a celebrity as your spokesperson? It's nice to have that ad on, on, online or on TV and said, here, I am endorsing this thing to change the world right here. You know, it, trustworthy. Yeah. Yeah. May not. Rich person. None of these people may be trustworthy. Okay, but, you know, there's all kinds of different people. Would you choose a group of fishermen from out in the middle of nowhere? I probably would not. I would be like, fishermen, Th these, these guys, I, I, I don't know. But that's who Jesus chooses. You see, 
we look on the outside of people. We, uh, we really do. We all do. I do. We all do. I, I get caught doing this, too. You know, we judge people by, you know, appearance, how much money they have, uh, their position, the power that they will. You know, we think that these are the, the folks who can really get things done. But God comes to we everyday people. Jesus came to the everyday folks. Out in the middle of nowhere, doing just doing what they do every day, just like us, doing what we do every day. And Jesus comes to us and says, follow me. Follow me. Now, Jesus didn't offer them a, uh, a job description. <laughs> Jesus didn't say, well, here's your benefits. You know, you're going to get a 401k uh, a K retirement plan and health insurance, and you're going to get a raise every so often, blah, blah. No, Jesus didn't say anything about that. Jesus doesn't explain anything. Jesus doesn't promise anything. Follow me. That's all Jesus says. Follow me. Come and follow me. Folks, even in places like Ukraine, there's still worship services going on all the time. Light of Christ is still shining. Maybe the worship service some days may be down the subway station <laughs> or out in the field outside of town where hopefully they won't bomb us today. I, I've, I've served in, in a combat zone for five months. I, I know the stresses and strains, you know, wondering where that next attack is going to come from, what can do to you and can do to a group of people. But I also know even in that situation, the light of Christ can shine if we but follow Jesus there. And the same true all around the world in Africa. In the Middle East, wherever there's strife, wherever there's problems, the light of Christ shines because people listen to the call of Christ and Jesus says, follow me, and people follow Jesus, the light of shines just like it did in the land of Nephtali and Zebulun. In the shadow of darkness, the light shines. Folks, if we want to change the world, if we want to do things that really make a difference, if we really want to uh, make things better for others, all we have to do is say yes when Jesus says, come follow me. A lot of times we go, oh, I don't know, Jesus. <laughs> You want me to go with you there? I don't know about over there. I'm, I'm comfortable right here. You know? I don't know if I want to go over there with you to that troubled area to deal with that problem. But Jesus says, follow me. Follow me. So who do you follow? And we all follow somebody. How many of you, I'm asking our young folk out there, how many of you follow people on social media, TikTok? It's, oh, I see some heads bobbing up and down. There. How many of you follow a sports team? I'm not going to ask you which one. I don't want a riot to break out in the middle of worship here. But, you know, I'm not going to ask you which one. We follow a sports team. How many of you uh, maybe follow uh, different politicians if, if they do stuff that you like maybe you know or you follow a certain news source that you kind of like to follow you know you know we all have things that we follow but who we really need to be following is jesus because jesus still comes to us right where we are right where we are today and says follow me come and follow me don't just go out and make a living because it doesn't matter what your job is or my job is. We all have a ministry that we're supposed to be doing, each and every one of us. If we just listen when Jesus says, come, follow me, follow me. If we want to change the world, the church, whatever, for the better, we need to let that light shine, and we need to follow Jesus. So think about this week. Who do you follow? Let us pray. Almighty and most wonderful God, just like you did, 
for those first disciples, for Simon Peter, Andrew, his brother, James and John, the son of Zebedee. You come and meet us right where we are in our everyday world, doing our everyday jobs, in our everyday neighborhoods, our everyday schools, and you say, follow me. Give us the courage to follow you, to go where you lead and to make the difference in your name that you want us to make, Almighty God, because you have made us all different and given us different gifts, and there are certain things that we can only do, Lord. May we have the courage to step up and follow you and do them in your name and for your glory only. In Jesus' name we do pray. The Lord who we follow. Amen. The call of Christ is extended to you. If you're not following Jesus in your life, come and begin that journey and begin to follow Jesus who's calling out to you today. If you're without a faith community and want to grow and disciple with us, make your presence official with us today, ask that you come as well. Also, we're all invited around this table. This table of love given to us through Christ's great sacrifice upon a cross. Bringing us all together in love, forgiving us of our sins, and asking us to follow him to this table. Please stand, if you're able, for a hymn of invitation and communion. Thank you for bringing us together today. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for bringing on when we have hardships, bringing us the people that can help us. As we get ready to have this communion, let us keep in mind what Jesus sacrificed in order for us to be able to be here today and partake of this communion. In his name we pray. Amen. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes.
Before our acolytes come forward, I have one thing uh, to share. I shared in the first service, and I'll share uh, with you all. Uh, our end-of-year numbers uh, for giving for this uh, last year, 2022. Uh, now, these numbers are income to the church, general fund giving, and uh, rentals uh, from use from the church property. So there are a lot of other monies that were like given to Week in Compassion, Miss Doors Appalachian Ministry, Room in the Inn, that are not counted in here. So this is not everything that was taken in, but just for running of the church, we had uh, $162,066.65. Uh, income expenses were $166,138.83, a difference of a little over $4,000, I think $4,072. Uh, this is not terrible news. Uh, it's not the best it could be. Uh, we, we did pay off the pews. We don't owe anybody anything. Uh, so uh, we're not, yeah. <laughs> Give it up. And it's from the last two years from the pandemic. This is fantastic news <laughs> compared to what we've done the last couple of years when we've really been struggling. But as I believe Betty said, our stewardship chair, we're getting by, but we need to start living. And so we're going to work on living in our, our stewardship and, and our giving and teaching stewardship to come up. But just want to let everybody know for transparency uh, what's going on. So we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. Doing better uh, incrementally, uh, but just want to let everybody know. So that being said, I'd like to ask, ask our acolytes to please come forward and everybody please stand if you're able for our benediction. Just a reminder, next Sunday is 10 o'clock, and if you're going to stay, bring sandwiches, chips, or cookies to share. So we'll just have a light lunch while we put our faith in action. Let's please bow our head for a benediction. Almighty and most wonderful God, we are so eternally grateful that you still continue to come where we are, doing what we do every day, work, school, in retirement, in our neighborhoods, at church, and you call out to us, come and follow me. We ask, Almighty God, that as we leave this place, we will truly follow you. We ask that you will be before us and be behind us. You will be to our right hand, to our left, above us and below us, until such a time as we may come together again on this side of the river or the next. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen.